Hi, I'm Ralph Bass, author of the book, Back to the Future, a commentary on the book of Revelation. Uh, on this lesson, we're going to talk about the Battle of Armageddon. This begins in chapter 16 and verse 13. And I saw coming out of the mouth of the dragon and the mouth of the beast and the mouth of the false prophet three unclean spirits like frogs. Now first we notice there's an unholy uh, trinity here. A dragon, beast, and false prophet corresponding in their de demonic fashion to the Father and the Son and Holy Spirit. Uh, we see that uh, these, this hierarchy of evil has been brought together to do a, a job, a job of destruction on Jerusalem. Now, this unholy trinity, we're told, brings forth three unclean spirits like frogs. Now, this symbol of frogs comes out of the book of Exodus in the Old Testament, where we read Moses saying, But if you refuse to let them go, behold, I will smite your whole territory with frogs. Frogs were a judgment. This symbolism is not uh, by mistake, but on purpose. There is a judgment here taking place of which the frogs represent. But not only do the frogs represent judgment, but Egypt itself represents judge judgment. As God poured out his wrath on Egypt and uh, the era in which Moses lived, so now God is going to pour out his wrath on Jerusalem, the new Egypt, the new enemy of God. Now the reason these frogs were uh, brought together was to do a job. For they are spirits of demons performing signs which go out to the kings of the whole world to gather them together for the war of the great day of God the Almighty. Now the problem is Rome at this time is suffering weakness. It has been at a period of uh, internal and exterior, uh, external rebellion. As a result, uh, Rome is tottering just a little bit and in essence needs help. And then the Holy Trinity is going to see that it gets the help it needs to field an army. And so uh, in the uh, 60s, for instance, we have major rebellions in uh, Great Britain. It's a decade of strife uh, leading to a great fire in Rome at A.D. 64, a Jewish rebellion uh, which followed soon thereafter. There was a revolt of the Germanic legions. There was the death of Nero. This was followed by the year of four emperors. So it was a time of great strife. And if ever the uh, allies of Rome would feel tempted to ignore Rome's uh, demand for the, uh, their soldiers uh, for this battle, uh, this would be the time because uh, Rome was uh, demonstrating weakness. But uh, this, uh, these demonic frogs go forth securing their commitment so that a great army is fielded at Jerusalem. And notice uh, what this army is for. Uh, to gather them together for the war of the great day of God the Almighty. This is just another way of talking about the uh, day of the Lord. Joel says it this way, Alas for the day, for the day of the Lord is near, and it will come as destruction from the Almighty. Now that's what we have here, a day of destruction. And that's the reason this uh, uh, battle is uh, being formed. These armies are gathering for the day of the Lord. Now the day of the Lord is a day of destruction not on uh, Gentiles but on Jews, but on Judah. And that's the way the phrase is used in the Bible time and time again. Again, uh, uh, looking at Acts 2, 14 through 20. 21, uh, where Peter quotes Joel, and I will grant wonders in the sky above and signs on the earth below, incidents uh, uh, elaborated in the book of Revelation, blood and fire and vaporous smoke, the sun will be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and glorious day of the Lord shall come. So uh, this day of the Lord, this great battle is what Joel was talking about. And it shall be that everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. The gospel uh, was preached by uh, Peter and the apostles, and many Jews came to faith in Christ, but others did not, and they were the subject of the great 
battle under discussion. And skipping over just a bit to verse 16, and they gathered them, uh, the them being these allies of Rome and these armies, these, uh, this unholy trinity, uh, these frogs that did these uh, miraculous deeds, they gathered them, these armies, together to the place which uh, in Hebrew is called Har Mageddon. We pronounce it in English Armageddon. It, Har means mountain. Mageddon refers to Megiddo. Now this is, of course, a geographic place in northern Israel. It is significant as a significant place because it was a mountain on which fortifications were built. And it was uh, uh, a forward outpost to keep uh, the rest of uh, Israel from uh, uh, suffering the invasion from uh, the enemy from the north. Now the thing about it is, especially in that day, or perhaps in any day, an army insists, uh, demands that it take the high ground. And so here we had this mountain overlooking uh, a great valley and uh, the control of this mountain by Israel could not be tolerated by an enemy, so it was inevitably attacked and destroyed. And was, uh, uh, this happened several times in the history of Israel. It was uh, proverbial, uh, you might say, and that's the reason the symbolism is so valuable, because it was proverbial. So when uh, John here talks about this Battle of Armageddon, he is drawing upon imagery that says uh, a great battle on a hill. Well, in fact, Jerusalem was on a hill. And this is what this great battle references. It's not something in the distant future, but it's something that occurred in that day where this, uh, these armies were gathered and uh, this battle took place. So the Battle of Armageddon, uh, in fact, well, uh, is not in our future, it's in our past. It was the destruction of Jerusalem in A.D. 70. Uh, the symbolism is the, the key to understanding what this refers to. The symbolism of a, a city set on a mountain that was the object of military uh, hostility. And uh, these uh, uh, armies were gathered together, but the, the uh, image behind the symbol was Jerusalem itself and uh, the Battle of Armageddon was the destruction of Jerusalem in A.D. 70. Thank you.